Welcome to the Wall Street Crossover Show, brought to you by Tip TV in conjunction with our sponsors for this segment, and that is Darren Sindon from Admiral Markets. Uh, Darren, how the devil are you, sir? Yeah, very well, thank you, Nick. Did you have a decent weekend? Uh, I did, thank you. Sun was shining. Um, all apart from the rugby result, it uh, was very pleasant. Yes, a bit of a disaster. Uh, yes, yeah, self-inflicted as well. So That's from what I understand, with my limited knowledge of um, rugby. Right, let's talk markets. Um, European bulls is weaker this morning. Yeah, uh, a little bit off, off the top again in Europe. Nothing dramatic, but, uh, but you know, just a further sort of attrition or decay, if you will, in, in the index values. Um, not much, obviously, um, to change that in the near term. Uh, we've got some important US data coming out at the back end of this week. Maybe that can have a, a more positive influence, but uh, I think even the, the effect of that's somewhat limited now. Um, individual data points are not really going to cut it. I think it's going to have to be uh, um, a bigger trend, um, some positivity. I'm not sure where that would come from, to be honest, that, that's going to make a difference. Maybe if we got you know, consensus on Syria and sorting the mess in the Middle East, that perhaps that could be part of that. But mm. uh, beyond that, I'm not sure. Understood. OK, we're <coughs> watching for the first time. We've got a number of slides to go through. Let's kick off with the first one. Data released over the European session. What's caught your eye this morning? OK, well, we'll start with, uh, with a, a data point that came out uh, well before Europe opened in Japan. Um, the, the leading economic index indicator for July came in at a read of 105, slightly better than the forecast of 104.9, but down from the prior read. Uh, for June of 106.7. Now, this is one of those composite indicators. In this case, it's it's 12 indicators that are blended together. And the idea is that this overall read should show, uh, give you a good clue as to the midterm health of the economy. Um, just to put that read in, in some kind of context, so a bit better than the forecast, but worse than the prior read. Um, if we look back to January uh, 2014, we were talking about numbers of around 112.5 at that point. So, um, that was a little bit better. It's It's well off the pace. Uh, in terms of where we were uh, just over a year ago and uh, there's still plenty of work for the Bank of Japan and Shinzo Abe to do. If we spin over into Europe proper, um, we had a couple of data points out of uh, Italy today. It wasn't much of a calendar for, as far as Europe was concerned, but we had Italian consumer confidence, first of all, for September at a very impressive read that was two of 112.7, well ahead of the forecast 108.7 and well ahead of the prior read of 109.3. Uh, and it was a similar story as far as business confidence was concerned for September. Not quite such a big beat, but nonetheless, uh, 104.2 was today's number against the forecast of 102.7 and indeed the prior read of 102.7. So, um, Italy and Spain seem to be the, the two economies really that are, that are you know, ticking the boxes as far as the Eurozone is concerned. Um, the rest are, uh, are sadly lacking. Um, so that's the week ahead? Yeah, well, there's, there's quite a bit of data coming up. We'll just pick out some of the, the highlights as far as we're concerned. Spanish uh, retail sales uh, for August, a year on year number to look for t tomorrow, that's Tuesday. And then the German um, HICP, um, that's the. Uh, uh, harmonised index of consumer prices, the, the ECB's preferred measure of inflation. That's the September number. Again, we'll focus on, or we'll suggest you focus on the year-on-year -year data. Once again, that's out tomorrow. Then we've got uh, French producer prices for August. Um, this time of the month on month number that's coming out on Wednesday and uh, and also Eurozone manufacturing PMI for September to look forward to as well. So Understood. So a busy week this week. It is, absolutely, yeah. Okay, so let's now take a look at the European movers. OK, well, we'll start um, in Denmark with uh, Novo Nordisk AS, that's a ticker NOVOB uh, in Copenhagen, trading around 385.7 Danish kroner, that's up around 3.2% this morning. Uh, and the reason is that their diabetes drug, Traceba, uh, received FDA approval in the States and could now be launched in the US market as early as uh, the first quarter of 2016. Interesting to note, though, that this that this drug was first uh, submitted for testing in 2013 and was, in, was initially rejected by uh, the, the FDA. They obviously um, you know, ma improved the product and managed to, uh, to qualify there. Uh, there are a couple of other uh, Novo Nordisk um, uh, diabetes treatments that are included in this approval as well, so it's all positive news for them. Um, and then coming back into the UK, uh, you could hardly call this positive, uh, Glencore, um, one of the world's biggest commodity traders, miners, ticker GLEN in London, 74.63p, down 22.8% wow. on the day. Quite an extraordinary move um, on top of the falls it's already had in the last 18 months. Uh, 
the story here, downward pressure continues on the stock of, of con concerns about liquidity and covenants. And the thinking in the press last week, sort of some blogs, was that uh, the further commodity prices fall, the harder it is for Glencore um, to uh, to carry its large, largely you know financed commodity positions and uh, you know that it's being squeezed and eventually could break some of these financing covenants um, the other thing that new, there was other news today that's pretty marginal in comparison they sold a nickel project um, at a knockdown price of eight million pounds but nonetheless it all adds to the negative sentiment understood let's turn our attention to M&A um, rumors and movers a couple of stories here then um, first of all an update on the uh, Vodafone and Liberty Global talks we've touched on this many times over the last uh, three or four months but the talks now are finally off there Vodafone abandoned them this morning saying that no agreement could be reached um, sources close to Vodafone suggest that differences over asset values were the major issue. Yeah. Um, Vodafone also said that any talks that they had had were at very early stage. Um, it's unclear exactly what assets had been under discussion and of course as we said before we thought John Malone might have been on a fishing expedition anyway because he, he'd hinted that Liberty Global would be open to a sale to Vodafone but of course London markets had hoped that Liberty Global would bid for Vodafone. So. Um, um, <coughs> no real common ground there at all, it seemed. Staying in uh, that, that sort of sector, Comcast Corporation in the States, CM, CSA, the ticker there, around $56.54 is to buy 51% of Universal Japan for around $1.5 billion, valuing the uh, Japanese theme park operator at around $6.2 billion as an enterprise. Uh, there had been talk of an IPO for the theme park operator, but that's now apparently on hold. Um, Comcast already owns uh, Universal Studios in the US via its NBC Universal subsidiary. Um, Universal Studios Japan is uh, seeing growing visitor numbers to its Wizarding World Harry Potter Park yeah. in Tokyo, and that's the real attraction which they, that theme park might be rolled out across the country. So, understood. Okay, so let's take a look at US data points to keep an eye on today. Uh, right, well, uh, as far as today's data is concerned, we've got personal income and outlays for August. We'll look here at the actual personal income number, although there are three or four other data points in the figure. Um, forecast is for a read of plus 0.4, bang in line with the prior month of plus 0.4. Um, as I say, there are some other data points in there that, that people will probably pick over and look for, looking for clues on inflation. And then about now, <coughs> Fed Governor Robert Dudley is speaking in New York. He's being interviewed by the Wall Street Journal. Um, and so I've no doubt there'll be headlines from his testimony coming out uh, right. this afternoon. I believe six Fed governors in total are speaking this week in various forms or another. So uh, uh, again, plenty to... Uh, to Uncertainty. Get <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, and then other big numbers this week to look for uh, on the calendar. First of all, uh, the ISM Manufacturing Index on Thursday and of course uh, the non-farm payrolls number uh, for September on Friday. And I believe the medium forecast there is about 190,000. OK, let's go to pre-market and look at some movers and some chart points. And these are cash um, chart points. OK, so uh, the first uh, one is, um, is, is just to highlight something that happened on Friday. Uh, ProShares Ultra Buy to ETF, that's ticker BIB in the US, $61.89. Uh, they closed down 10% on the day. Um, this is a twice geared ETF on the biotech sector, but it slumped sharply because the shares, the underlying sector, uh, have come under further pressure. And uh, you know, wouldn't be surprised to see a further downside move in that sector because the charts do look very unpleasant. And then um, ArcelorMittal, one of the world's largest steel makers in the US line that trades under the ticker MTUS, $5.52, down 1.08% today. Um, the steel manufacturer shares weaker ahead of the open following a 4.78% fall in Friday's US session. So metals and mining, as we saw earlier, still a very, very hard place to, uh, to, to be an investor and to make a living. Yes, and in terms of uh, equity levels, um, as you say, we are easier in Europe um, this morning. FTSE is being dragged down by Vodafone particularly. But uh, now the FTSE downside level, we're looking at 60.30, plays 61.30 to the upside. For the DAX, uh, we've gone with 9,600, plays 9,700. Um, you know, it's hard, hard to credit. We were at 11,500 not so long ago. Mm -hmm. um, S&P and the Dow, relatively negative price action to finish the week last week. So 1915 uh, on the S&P downside, plays 1935 to the upside. And for the Dow, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we go with 16,265 
on the downside is 16373 to the upside. Okay. Um, in terms of the currency pairs? Not too much change, really, from Friday's numbers. Um, Euro dollar now, 111.60, we look for on the downside, and 112.12, the level we want to see broken to the upside. For Aussie dollar, US dollar, 69.90 is uh, downside level, so we're slipping back to, to below that uh, 70 cent handle versus 70.35 to the upside. Perhaps the, the biggest surprise is that we haven't seen more of a move in dollar yen, but 120.04 now on the downside plays 121.40 to the upside, and cable. Uh, 15196 our new downside level plays 15250 to watch to the upside okay so let's wrap up with our last slide in focus and I think we're going to talk about inflation Darren uh, yes so we've got um, as we saw at the beginning we've got various uh, inflation data points coming out this week across Europe um, data from Spain Germany and the wider eurozone well the question really is uh, you know how will uh, th th this these survey data stack up compared to the market based forecasts the chart in the middle uh, shows uh, the five-year five-year swaps, which are the, which are effectively inflation swaps, um, which predict how inflation is going to look. The uh, uh, the orange line is the uh, eurozone inflation expectation, and the purple line the market expectation for the US. Both of which have recently turned lower and look to be mm. heading lower again. Um, so uh, the, you know the question is, you know, can can the data substantiate? Um, expectations of a, of a rise or, or you know or is the market really calling it right with these inflation swaps I'm inclined to think the latter uh, of course both the Fed and the ECB will want to see the broad measures of inflation pick up near term remember the Fed is and it has an outright 2% uh, inflation target the ECB slightly more flexible with an at or near 2% inflation target both at the moment on the broadest measures of inflation though are way off the pace understood okay Darren Sinden market commentator Admiral Markets thank you for that segment the Wall Street cross the show will be back at one o'clock on Friday. So Friday for your next Wall Street crossover show. Darren, we'll see you live on the show tomorrow morning. Um, have a good week, everybody. Thank you.